Welcome, everybody, to the first episode of the Top 10 Show here on the Collider Network. Special welcome to our podcast fans who've been with us over a year. Well, this is what we look like, folks. It ain't pretty, that's for sure. Uh, I'm John Roca, one of your co-hosts for the show. You guys have seen me in a number of shows here on the Collider Network, but this podcast has been a special baby of mine, and I'm so happy that I'm getting to do it on video with my boy, my co-host, Matt Nost. I don't think you've ever called me your boy. Hey-o. It's a first. It's a first. Right. First time on video and first time as your boy. <laughs> this is nice. This is a good day for me. I feel better. I feel special. And I thank you for that. You know? You're most Puts welcome. Puts a little hop in my step as in the, the rest of my day. <laughs> Too bad the day's over by the time we leave here, but it's all right. I all will right. crush tonight. How long is this going? Okay. All right. So <laughs> you're cutting me off. <laughs> Jesus, my bartender just cut me off. Son of a bitch, guys. I got to go. Matt, t- tell them how we come up with these uh, insane lists well, of yeah. ours. Welcome to the top 10. So the way yeah. the show works, uh, each week we will pair the show with whatever we think is going to be the biggest movie of the weekend. And sometimes that weekend sucks. So we will cherry pick an idea and just yeah. choose that one for that week. Uh, but that's how we come up with the shows for each week. And this week, yeah, we and chose- this week our, uh, our inaugural episode, we count, we count down the top 10 Steven Spielberg films because BFG is coming out this weekend. Mm-hmm. And we thought, well, why not? Let's, let's, uh, let's count this one down. Yeah. We've done it on the podcast channel, but everything we did before, we're wiping it clean and we're starting all over yes. again. To those, yeah, that yeah. listen before, we are going to be repeating some shows we've already done, yeah. but at the same time, uh, our lists are now different. Yes. As time progresses, things change. Yeah. So you, you it's going to be a different show. Yeah. You want to tell them how the show works? Yeah. So once we set our topic, we don't talk to each other and we go our separate ways, create our own personal top 10 list. And we show back up here. We do the show like this. I do my bottom three. John does his bottom three. I do my next two. He does his next two. And then we trade one apiece. Once we've revealed our personal top 10s, we create the shows between the two of us. Look at that. And done. Kaboom. That Uh, was really well done. Um, Real quick. Shout out to Christian Harloff and Mark Ellis, who put us together over a year ago. And who knew we'd end up here? Yeah, uh, and they, uh, him, uh, Christian, and Dennis, and Mark all came to us uh, a few weeks ago and said, "Hey, we want to put it on camera." And here we are. Yeah. How amazing. It's fantastic. Uh, and this and gorgeous studio. I know, right? This is really nice. And that's where our shelf is going to be for the uh, championship belt when, <laughs> once we win that. And the partners. In the it's right over down. there. That's what I'm thinking. we got to talk to Dennis. Well, we got to be clear space. we got to be I'll buy the space. hardware. I do that stuff. I yes. can put it up. It'll look professional. Yes. It'll look nice. You do a nice little dusting on it. I know uh, you do. Uh, also, in the show. Right. Uh, other aspects of it. So there's something we do called punting. Yes. And if we have, uh, like I have something at nine, he has it something, you know, like at five, he'll tell me to punt. Yes. And we'll save that discussion for when it's at five since right. he cherishes it more than I do, obviously. Yeah, we'll always punt to the higher ranked yeah. movie, wherever it is on our list, and then we can talk about it and get into it. Uh, and also, we talk about films that are close enough in ranking. For example, if it's Matt's number uh, Matt's number eight or it's number seven, it's my number eight, we'll talk about yeah. it, right? We'll, talk we'll just about get it into it because we'll just talk about it. All right. So anyway... Matt, that's enough intro. So we got Spielbago this week. Let's do it. And it's a, it's a great list. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Even, even for the ones that don't make it, they're still great. That's how much work this guy's put out. It's, yeah. you know, incredible. It's molded so many different childhoods. Yeah. And you're like, wow, how do I make a list of 10? Well, I did that for you. <laughs> do you want to say but, a special message to the fans about uh, commenting? Or do you want to wait out to the end? Oh, well, yeah, that's true. So... The show is basically, it's just us two jackasses, yeah, you know? Right. That's it. It's just Very our well two opinions. Very well said. Exactly. Very eloquently said. It's just our two opinions. So if you're going to attack us for it, that's fine. Go right ahead. It's, it's fine. Just know that your anger is for something else, and this is completely misplaced when you direct this at me and John. <laughs> but that's fine. That's what I'll take it as, is be like, it's okay. It's okay. Just it's water right. off a duck's back. We'll keep going. And yeah. trust me, there's one movie missing it's on both be, our lists that you people are going to go insane about. I imagine we'll talk about it later. Yes, very much so. As to right. why it's not on the list. Let's get it going. My number 10 yes. uh, is Close Encounters of the Third Kind. All right, that's my number nine. We can talk about it. Oh, that's your number nine. Yes, it is. That moved down in it rankings did. for you. Well, don't, we're not, I don't know what you're talking about. This is a whole new list. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so now we're just wiping that memory yeah, gone. Absolutely. I apologize. I had I one of those realize. neuralizers on my brain. All right, so. It's what sucked me into, like, I don't know, the idea of space, like aliens coming here, yeah. and just the simple, like, oh, how it could manifest itself, and people be drawn to it just unknowingly, and that kind of mystery about all of it. Yeah. Like, maybe it could go down like that. I have no idea. But I was young enough to see it that I was entranced. Yeah. I remember studying, I took a class uh, when I was at Florida State over the summer, and I studied Spielberg. It was, it was a, an entire class on Spielberg. Mm-hmm. The syllabus was like 300 pages. It was insane. And one of the films that really, I didn't understand how much w- what was into this film was Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Yeah. I had no idea that the ending uh, music sequences were about a tribute to his parents, his mom and his dad. How yeah. They communicated, uh, that is his mom and dad speaking to each other. The lighter notes being the mom, the heavier ba- bass notes being the dad, all that kind of, Francois so Truffaut's in the film. So his mom is Charlie. Brown's teacher. 
That's what I didn't know that. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. That's very well said. Yeah, very it's amazing. Well said. He's been part of our lives now for numerous Absolutely. generations. Plus, people love it for the mashed potatoes. And it's Richard Dreyfus, not like he's being the lead in this film in a way that he hadn't been in any other film, I think, in my opinion. And the yeah. work done by him. And then you have the D. Wallace storyline going on with the little kid. Uh -huh. It's just really endearing the stuff you go through. And the special effects still hold up today. They, do. they really the do. The truck sequence totally holds up. Yeah, but I even believe when the ship comes down, yes. that still looks legitimate to me. Right. Right. Whereas sometimes when you watch those older movies, you're like, wow, that just looks like a cardboard cutout. Yeah. And they just shimmy down. It's on like fishing line. <laughs> and they just set it down. And you're like, it's the best we could do, guys. Let's roll with it. This thing's got a budget. All right. What's your number nine? Uh, my number nine is Minority Report. Oh, uh, we are punting. We are punting. Yes, we are. How, how much of a punt do you think mm, that is? It's pretty, a little more higher. A little more higher. Yeah, a it's lot good higher. English, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, What's number right. eight? A little more higher. So then I guess at number eight for me then is uh, Catch Me If You Can. Uh, oh, we're punting on that one as well. Really? Yeah. A double punt. Yes, a double punt. Wow. This is very rare for the show, but it's happening. Punt! Look Ooh, at that. That's a great graphic. I like that. I like that. Wow. All there right. So uh, my number 10 is, and probably might not be on your list, is The Color Purple. Uh, it is not on my list. Which you have not seen it in the year since we spoke about whatever we're not supposed to mention. I, right. I saw so many movies this past year. <laughs> I saw so many. And leading up to this, I rewatched one that's on my list just oh, to nice. go. Yeah, it confirms its status for me there. Okay. Uh, well, but no. Okay, well, Color Purple to me is always a movie that affected me uh, since I was, I saw it when I was 15, 16 years old when it came out. And it just, it's just, it's such a f fascinating film because it really does a great job of explaining the black experience. And it's directed by a, a Jewish kid from New York. Like, this is what's so amazing about this film uh, because it, it takes you on an emotional journey. It's probably Whoopi Goldberg's best work as an actress. Yeah. And I think Oprah's best work as an actress, definitely. But at no point do you feel the white influence on the film. And I think that's what's so fascinating about it. Spielberg did, did a great job of getting out of the way and letting the film breathe on its own. Obviously, it's based on the Alice Walker novel, True. but there's so much going on here in the generational storyline. And then Danny Glover playing a villain, which was really rare to see at that time, because Danny was doing a lot of... Well, I guess with Witness, he was a bit of a villain, but like yeah, he was but doing the lethal weapon was just around it, the corner. He becomes yeah. Danny Glover yeah. quick enough exactly. that he just maintains being Danny Glover for the past 20 years. Yeah, yeah. And I wish he'd work more, because you could use Danny Glover in just about every film. <laughs> and, and apparently in commercials I, now, too, for restless leg syndrome or whatever he's doing. Well, but, everybody's yeah. got to eat, so... <laughs> That's true. Hey, you do what you got to do. Keep, keep Keep living, Danny. <laughs> Don't let anybody hold you back. But for me, it was just, it's just really moving because near the end when they, you know, I don't want to spoil it too much, but when they, the reuni when they get reunited, yeah. there's a great moment with the child, there's a great moment with Whoopi and her sister. Like, all of that happens. And it's just, it just really, it's a really uh, a, a harsh look into what happened at that time with slavery, with people of poor, it with African Americans of poor times. Yeah, it really does. And it still does. As now. a Latino man watching a Jewish yeah. director... <laughs> Tell the black an African American story <laughs> that connected you so much. You were America at that Absolutely. point. You should have just saluted every That's person right. down the street. That's right. All right. So we already talked about number eight. Yep. It was close account of the third kind. Now my number, my number. Oh, that was on my number nine, rather. Yeah. My number eight? eight, Jurassic Park. Uh, we're gonna punt. Okay. I had a feeling we. Would it's punt. not much of a punt, but it's a punt. All right. What's your number? Uh, what's your number seven? There's that sweet punt graphic Look at again. That. Thank you very much. You even spelled like it that. right. They even spelled it right. P U N T. Uh, right, my number? number seven yeah. is probably going to be a Pantorusku for you. All right. Uh, it is going to be Indy and the Jones, Raiders the, of the Lost Ark. Are you seven? There's a reason for that. I have, I have my were rationale. You, were you shot? For what, like while you were watching it, or do you have a negative? Like, did something Look, negative happen to you that it would be number it. seven? And we will get to it after the punt. Oof, okay, we'll get to it after the punt. All right, what's your number six then? My number six is Jurassic Park. Okay, let's talk about it. Well, it's a two place <laughs> punt. It's not. They're not. No, sharing that's fair. That's right fair. next to each other. Yeah, that's so fair. So that is a punt situation. Yeah, let's talk about it. Uh, surprisingly, not in our top fives. Neither either one of ours are top fives. Uh, it's fascinating. All right. No, just because once I went back and re looked at the, it, the list that never happened. Yeah. Uh, I was just like, you know what? I think that comes down because of this. Yeah. Like in reflecting and looking back at the list right. as a whole. But Jurassic Park is, I mean, you want to talk about something holding up, the CGI and that the dinosaurs oh, yeah. came to life. Yeah. And I was still, I, you know, I think it was, a, what year did that come out? I was a teenager when I think that it was came 95 out. or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mid teens Where's Scott Mance when we need him? Where's Mance exactly. when we need him? With the dates, no. 94, 93. Oh, we had 93. 93? There 93? we go. All right, so I was a little bit younger than that, yeah. like freshman or eighth grade or something like that. Uh, just shake that hair. <laughs> but to see I that, being like, a freshman. you've visualized my entire life what a dinosaur mm -hmm. would look like. Mm -hmm. and you see these things come to life and they yeah. look as real as can be. Yeah. And the storyline on top of that is so engaging. I mean, it, it falls apart now after critical analysis sure. for 20 something years. Sure. Uh, just people like, you know, the T Rex. 
if it's down this much lower and then they pull the car out and the car falls, like yeah. the T-Rex isn't tall enough then just to get over the barrier to attack all those people. Right. You're like, well, you can't apply logic, too much logic to this world. Yeah. So we're, we're suspending a lot of disbelief. Let's give them just that little bit more. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, I get it. But it's, it's just, it's fascinating. I love yeah. the movie. I think it's a little lower for me because you're right. Going back and looking at another story doesn't work quite as well. It isn't as seamless as you remember it being when you were mm -hmm. younger and seeing it. But I think the graphic, you're totally right. The graphics, the special effects so work uh, well in the film. The chemistry with Sam Neill, Laura Dern, yeah. all of that is really, the kids, really great. Yeah, the kids are great. they were successful. Yeah, which, which, which is why uh, Jurassic World bothered me so much I didn't feel the connection to the kids that I felt with those kids in Jurassic Park when they're a sufferer when they're the, the T-Rex is there the, the, the what are they the velociraptors is that what those little things are yeah 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 they're around them and they're like the whole tense sequence when they're in the kitchen and all that jazz and then through the museum fascinatingly interesting still gripping and you st and, and still moves me the, the shaking of the water when they hear the T-Rex well, coming that, yeah, girl, that girl that actress was great velociraptor was a dinosaur that I kind of heard of yeah. as a kid and yeah. I loved dinosaurs Dinosaurs, and then see this thing's basically just like a, a flying nuclear powered uh, lawnmower, and it's just <laughs> mowing through anything that gets in its path. You're like, where was this when I was a kid? Yeah, no doubt. And just to see that, like, if that was hunting you and then they do it in packs, you're like, oh my God. You know what? I'll take the bullet. I'll take the bullet. <laughs> but I'm not going to make it. What you see in the film, though, is something that Spielberg is really, really does well. He does action really, really well. And yeah. people don't consider him an action film director. He does action so, so well in all his films. I don't think I've ever had any complaints about the action sequences he's ever directed in any of his films. No. Even the films that don't quite get there, the action sequence, you can still enjoy that action sequence. Well, you can always see the care that he puts yes. into a film. Yeah. There's never been a lazy Spielberg film where you're yeah. just like, ah, I, I don't know, he was you know, on drugs yeah. kind of thing. Like yeah. He was strung out or something. But yeah, even even if it, the movie doesn't resonate with me like it does others, you yeah. can still appreciate the craftsmanship. Absolutely. Yeah, the guy's... A generational talent. Yeah. Uh, okay, that was your number six, right? Yep. Okay, so my number seven is uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. We are punting. Really? That thus, one's higher than the first thus one. Thus the reason for the previous punt sure. being at its location. Okay, if you Listen, say so. that's what it is. All right. That's, that's what it right. Is. It's Once our again, lists. Yeah. It's Those out lists. there watching, you want yeah. to attack me right now? That's what he's trying to do on the show. Welcome to the show. It's a lot of attacks. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. It is. All right, my number six then is uh, Saving Private Ryan. Uh, we are going to punt on that. Wow, a lot of punts in this show. It was kind of kind of happening. Okay. It's going to happen because it, it happens sometimes on this on these shows because there are so many good movies, and you and I like depending on our experiences. Yeah, put you it where saw we put them it. in different ages. Yeah, yeah. Or you saw them in certain sequences. Right. Whatnot, or they they hold a different place in your imagination. Right. They're still though. We have a lot of punting, which means our lists are basically the same. Yeah. It's just a matter of where they are in the list. Exactly. All right. So what's your number five? Uh, my number five is Schindler's List. Oh, my God. I don't understand you at all. That's your five? That's my five. All right, well, we're punting that, you, okay. ins you insensitive person. All right, so my number five. <laughs> That's fine. We have other atrocity movies to deal with on this list. He does that a lot, so, well, not a lot, but. All right, so my number five is Minority Report, which was punted from. Okay. Punted from your number my number nine. Here's your number nine. I had I went and rewatched this film for our, our yeah. one of our Thunderdomes, uh, which is a, you can catch those on the podcast uh, channel, a version of this show, uh, and I really enjoyed the film so much more than I expected. Really? And yeah, it moved up I mean, for me in... It's on my list. In its esteem. Yeah, it moved up for me in its esteem. Once again, the action sequences are amazing. I also... Uh, sorry. I also think the uh, acting in the film was fantastic. Colin Farrell does great work. Oh, yeah. Tom Cruise Tom is best. fantastic. Samantha Morton, um, all the work that's done. Max von Blake Cio. Nelson. Yeah. Tim, yeah. He's... Great. Yeah. Absolutely great is this little weird warden. Right. Not really a warden. Like, right. he has no power other than he just stares out at these lifeless masses every day. <laughs> yeah. That's got to be a soul-crushing job. <laughs> you need a weirdo for that job. Yeah, it's true. You know what I mean? It's true. Somebody that, like, yeah, he lives in mom's basement, but there's, like, a cage at the top of the door, so totally. he can't come in unless mom allows him. Right. Uh, that guy. <laughs> but McDonough as well. So, But I love the story. The story totally works. I think it's still topical now, this whole idea oh, of yeah. predicting the future. I mean, the stuff you see in the film is stuff we have now. But the it's... wipe screens, all that kind of jazz. Like It's so how it's amazing how prescient it was for a film of its time. For the, it's like 2002 or 2003, Oh, yeah. Well, with all, all like the future that. technology and whatnot, and yeah. like the advertisement scanning your irises from afar and right. then going, hey, John, why don't you come to Barbados? <laughs> yes, exactly. You're like, I don't know. That's a good, that's a good question. This is Amazon. 
on. We thought you might like this. Yeah. You know, that kind of crap. But so, think about it. If that's the reality, too, then you could also have, like, creditors doing that. Oh. Or you're just getting heckled in public. Why do we need to talk about that? No, no, that should not No, happen. I'm just saying Actually, should not like be allowed that. to do that. If there's a good, there's a bad. You're going to get it with, like, attorney, uh, just commercials nonstop. Right. It's going to be brutal. But that's what we see in the film. You're right. What you just said, the good and the bad. So we see the bad side of this technology that is, yeah. like, guessing people's crimes well, it, before they actually do them and then a, arresting them yeah, before they do it. It's a philosophical discussion yeah. at that point because if they didn't commit the crime, then yeah. no crime was committed. Right. But if you know that they're going to do it, to yeah. what degree to certainty? Because nothing is 100%. Exactly. So that's, you're, you're, violate, you're, you're basically putting someone to sleep for potentially doing something. Yeah. You just but, assume they're going to do it. And what I think is also fascinating about the movie, it's one case where they didn't get it right. It had to be personal because yeah. Tom Cruise got involved. But what about all those other cases where that didn't have it to do with Tom Cruise, but apparently those are okay, but because it applied to Tom Cruise, all of a sudden, we well, gotta break the whole system down. You assume, we gotta find the corruption. You assume then, though, that all comes to light. Yeah, exactly. The other cases where they just got rid of her, uh, whatever, precognition. Yeah, her precog, And yeah. just went with the other two, since she was the strongest, and if yeah. she differed. Uh, but they do a great job also with the flashback sequences, when you see the visions of what mm -hmm. she's seeing. Just all of that is done really, really well. And I think the actor's name is Mike Binder, who's the one that gets hired to be the supposedly the pedophile who takes Tom Cruise's child. Oh. And that's heartbreaking. That is just heartbreaking. So to me, I really grew in appreciation for the film, seeing it over again. And I think it is w one of Spielberg's best films that he's ever directed from top to bottom. All right. What's your number four? My number four, I don't think is going to be on your list. Oh, okay. Which is Lincoln. No, Lincoln is not on my list. Love it. I watched it. That was the one I watched for this. And I'm like, this okay. is still? And I was like, watch it. I was like, hell yes, it does. Yeah, this interesting. It hits me. It hits me at so much of what I love, which yeah. is history yeah. and seeing someone that I've already read two or three books on, just him personally. Yeah. And then the Civil War and all the different battles. I've spent a lot of my life reading those books yeah. and trying to figure out what that world was like in my head. And to see just this encapsulation of a short amount of time where... A huge progressive vote was made and ratified in this country, and they chose to tell just that story, yeah. and they do it so beautifully. I could watch Day-Lewis come in and read the paper right now as yeah. Lincoln, and I would be enraptured. Like, I wanted him to give speeches, and I, but I love the joke in there that the character gives speeches so much, and everybody loves him. Yeah. But when he makes a joke about the fact that I give a lot of speaches, <laughs> everybody laughs. Yeah. They're like, yeah, but at the same time, I like hearing you talk. Be like, right. so do I. This is fantastic. Yeah. Well, I, I think I have to say that I don't revere it as much as you do because of the things. And that's what's interesting. The things you love about it are the things I kind of hate about it. Because I think the sequences in the Congress are kind of like ridiculous at times in nature. Mm -hmm. And it was it's kind of like a whole idea that Tommy Lee Jones is secretly sleeping with his black, his African American maid, but, I don't, that kind of stuff was like, Ugh, yeah, but parliamentary we're doing a little procedure, heavy handed. Parliamentary procedure. I mean, we're only at that point what eighty years removed from being part of England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're still acting in some way that they still do now, where they're heckling each other right. and they come to dismissive insults, and we phase that yeah. out over time. But I'd assume well, it's something along those lines. I don't know if we really phase that out over well, time, judging from a lot of yeah, the election time, races. The way yeah. they all stand up and basically openly say, "You're a blowhard. You're less than pond scum. Yeah, you're yeah. an idiot." Like but, that dismission, yeah. and that kind of bothered me a little bit. I, but listen, Daniel Day Lewis is phenomenal in the oh. movie. I'm not taking anything away from it's, but it's kind of it wasn't enough to put it over the edge for me because. It is a fantastic performance. He is Lincoln. He is yeah. Lincoln. But the other things kind of take away from the film a little bit to me, especially that ending. It should have ended as he's walking out after the butler gives him his gives him his gloves because he forgot him to walk out to the theater. We know what's going to happen. We don't need to see him dying on that bed. We don't need to see some flame as he's telling a speech. We don't need that. It was already great enough without it. And I think yeah. I think sometimes that's where that's where Spielberg suffers is he tries to give us that too much of a feel good ending. And, I agree. And he does some that. Films. In this one, it doesn't depress appreciate for my overall feeling about Obviously, the movie. Obviously, yeah, because you have so to So it's, it's fine, because it's only like an eight minute, yeah. yes, you could have cut eight, like it's eight minutes issue yeah. at the end. I know what you're talking about, because right. I, I paid attention this time around, like, yeah, 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 I could give you that, you could close right there. Right. But I think the rest of the movie is just so captivating to yeah. me. And I think Sally Field's a great choice for uh, to play uh, Mary Todd Lincoln, but I think it's sometimes they're their interactions are a bit because she seems so much well, older than him and it, it's a, to me it's like it looks like mom and mom's uh, arguing with her child like even though he's got the makeup on it feels her energy feels like mom arguing with her child and that bothered me a little bit so I'm just like oh it just takes me out a little bit but Daniel yeah. Lewis is fantastic uh, what right. you got it for uh, my number four is catch me if you can okay what number is that for you uh, that was number eight for me okay um, once again a film that I rewatched for this and I absolutely fell in love with it. Absolutely fell in love with oh, it, even more movie. than I had before. Uh, I just think the interaction between Tom Hanks and uh, and um, 
uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is just fantastic. And it's so fun. The film is so much fun without sacrificing the undercurrent of seriousness going on with the relationship he has oh, yeah. with his dad and the relationship with his mom and the situation with Tom Hanks when he realizes the fact that this is his life. This is his life. He's, oh, a, when, he's well, a sad I mean, guy. This is his life. We've talked about it before, but yeah. when, when DiCaprio calls him on Christmas yeah. and the look on Hanks' face when he realizes you don't have anybody else to talk to tonight. Yeah. You're just as pathetic, if not more so, than me. Yeah. And just, it's such a great, because it's Tom Hanks sticking the knife in and just twisting it, just <laughs> smiling at you. And you you want to like side with him, but at the same time, you've come to enjoy DiCaprio's yeah. character so yeah. much that you want him to kind of get away with it, even yeah. though he's, he's doing do. all these things. Look, yeah. I mean, he was head of uh, a hospital. Yeah. He, you know, he do posed you being a pilot. He did all these things that put so many people in jeopardy. Yeah. So many people, and yet you're still like this guy. Because he's lovable. Because he's so charming. And that's what that's what you need to make a film like this works. And I work. And I think DiCaprio is at the height of his charm as an actor in this movie. And the it, you have Amy Adams, Martin Sheen, you have all these like uh ancillary, ancillary actors that come in and play these really great parts and really give them life. Yes. Yeah. Because they're so, because they're snapshots of his life. And so they're fun to watch when he's doing that. What I think is so fascinating too is the speed at which he directs this film. Spielberg is constantly moving into the next thing, into the next thing, into the next thing. And I think it works so well with a film like this. And the colors, it's just, for me personally, it's like, I love the 50s. I love the 50s in this in the history of this country. The, just something about the 50s has always appealed to me. The music, the vibrant yeah. colors, and he really captures that. Well, the movie, the movie as it's going along, like yeah. the, the colors that he chooses for yes. each era changes yes. with seamlessly with all the costumes mm -hmm. and like the pacing of the film also mimics the decades that they're happening in exactly. and it's yeah it, and it's a great film yeah it's great and when he gets caught in was it Italy or, or France or wherever I think it was in, yeah Brussels yeah Brussels okay in that plant to, like printing his yeah, money yeah just churning out yeah if that's true, I wonder. I wonder how much of that is hyperbole or build-up story, like sure. the mythos of, uh, of this character, right. uh, that he has this huge, like what we assume various, you know, governments or shadowy organizations do yeah. for American currency now, and they just have these huge warehouses where they're funneling out <laughs> fake currency, <laughs> and he's got this old just press just going nonstop, and it's spitting out. Yeah. Who knows how many countless of thousands of dollars at a time? Yeah, and it's great. It's a great shot, cinematography-wise. Mm -hmm. Just a great shot, and then I think it's a great. End Ending. I don't want to give out too much of it, like that ending in the airport. That one of the scenes near the end in the airport where he's trying to run again, and Tom shows up, and it's just so matter of fact. They're back and forth about their lives and about where they're going. He just says to him straight up, like, because he's the dad that DiCaprio never had. Yeah, you know, and that's what you really see come through in that scene at the end. And the, but without the film building to that moment, it wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have had the payoff that it had. And it was well, so plus perfect. It, in that it seemed way. like it felt like a betrayal of the DiCaprio character yeah. if he caved too quickly exactly. to the other side. Exactly. So he has to build up and basically see it every turn. It's a dead end. Yeah. And resign himself to that's the fate I have unless I change my ways. Absolutely. And then to see him make that change at that point, you believe it because it just that took years. Yeah. And I love what you're talking about with the printing press before. I love that they also set him higher. Mm -hmm. So he looks like yes. the madman in the yes. Raptors. Yes. You know, like an old gangster or something. Yeah. Like, it's like I'm white heat. Yeah. It's just like I, I'm fucking, you know, uh, indestructible. Nobody yeah. can take me down. I'm, exactly. you know, I'm king of the world all over again. <laughs> I just always love that shot. Yeah. So what's your number three? Uh, my number three is a punt from earlier, okay. which is Saving Private Ryan. I know you love this movie. How can Please you not love this take movie? A take, I'll tell you, but How go can ahead. you not love this <laughs> I'll movie? I'll tell you in just a second. That opening 10 minutes yeah. is so captivating. You're like, if this, in, in every World War II vet that lived through that, it was like, that's the closest approximation anybody's got. Yeah. It's still not quite the same thing because it never could be. Right. Unless we do the virtual reality and there's sense around and everything's moving around us and yeah. whatnot. Uh, I can't even imagine that even comes close because you don't have the fear of bullets raining down <laughs> on you at all times. Yeah. But just the progression, the build into the, the, the end when he turns to his wife and says, tell me I'm a good man. Yeah. Tell me I've led a good life. Literally one tear. I was like, Spielberg? Like... <laughs> Because the way the guy looked, he was destroyed. He needed validation because yeah. what was, how was all of that worth? Please tell me that it was worth that because yeah. I can't justify it on my own. Right. And I, oh my God, it's just like, oh, I was a, you know, a man at that yeah. point once I saw that thing. <laughs> it's like, oh Jesus, this movie. Well, it's number six on my list. Uh, I couldn't quite put it higher. I think for me, the beginning is so good that what follows afterwards doesn't hit the same level 
and it bothers me. It takes it away from the film a little bit. Uh, in the, what way? Well, in what way does it depreciate? Just the ridiculous nature of the them having to go and get this guy. And I know it's based on a real life thing in World War II, where those brothers all died, or they had to save one brother, or whatever. No, no, no. no. All the brothers died. It was like they a, did, right? They were all on one ship. Yes. And the ship got torpedoed, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And so it's, it's a, like I, I think that was the genesis of the decision. Yeah, the idea. To, yeah, to write this movie and and, and make it. But but for me, it just some of the sequences are a little ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, and they they bother me a little bit. But they have beautiful moments in the film like when when the kid uh, the French situation with where, where uh, Vin Diesel gets shot oh or, he's trying to save the little girl right saving the yeah. little girl Runs out when Giovanna Rib- out. what happens to Giovanna Ribisi that sequence when he's calling for his mom powerful brilliantly powerful and also when Tom Hanks breaks down after that situation oh when he turns and yeah. he's like Mike and he just cuts yeah he cuts the tension just by uttering his name yeah he's like Mike what's the pull up to me and you're like uh, it takes you out of the reality of the moment that yeah. they're having yeah. where they're all going to turn at each other and they're just a pack of dogs at that point yeah because they're just so frustrated right I'm in this situation that doesn't make a whole lot of sense yeah and I'm sent out to to fight a stranger right and it's to the death yeah and now we have to venture off and by our you know on our own eight of us or seven of us or whatever yeah. it was yeah <laughs> to retrieve one person well this is and this is what we talk about all the time when we do the show it's like uh, it's my personal opinion for yeah. whatever and i'm a military guy i should love this movie more than i do but for some reason there's stuff after the opening which man i'm telling i i i teared up remember seeing it the first time because i was still three or four years into the service so to me that was realistic still the possibility of it yeah so it was to see it on screen so vividly portrayed was uh, emotionally demolishing for me in the theater. I remember, and and you're right. I read, read a bunch of articles where old vets said this is as real as it's yeah, ever it's, you've it's ever close captured. It's gonna get yeah, but yeah. it's never gonna be the same. Exactly, exactly. And just just the what is it? An APC? What is it? All personnel carrier yeah, or something? Yeah. And the front just comes down. And you're just like and just and just they all and you're like oh 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 and to see. And you can, I'm guessing in the other boats, you can only kind of maybe see that when sure. the tide like takes you up or yeah. once you've opened, oh, Jesus. Well, that's why I like the sequences where he can't hear and he's going underwater. The camera, go, the sound, everything works so perfectly to make you live in that environment that you're just like, this is this is amazing. And yeah. so for me, what happens afterwards, I think some of the casting bothered me too. Nothing against Adam Goldberg or nothing against, it just kind of took it away from me a little bit. Even though he has a great death scene, it still kind of takes away some of the moments for me. And I think that's the progression. And the the... the the, the the fake out that it's not Tom Hanks that's actually Matt Damon has always bothered me. I know it moves you. I know, and I and I respect you greatly, obviously. But like that yeah. moment just bothers me. That's a fake out. I was like, eh, okay, so okay. A, these are my these are my reasons. Uh, all right, that was your number three, right? Yeah, that was my number three. <laughs> what do you got? What do you got? <laughs> Keep it together, man. We're almost. I got there. a guess as to what your number three is, which I can't. Yeah, I can't. It's impute Raiders because I have okay. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, which we punched from punt from punted yeah, from earlier. It's seven for me. Yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark. What are you gonna say, man? Uh, nothing. I love that film. Two two pieces. It's it is only for me beaten by one. Right, but I mean, it's so much farther down your list. I was just surprised by it because it's such a great, fun film. Uh, the dialogue still works. I watched it again. I think two weeks ago. Dialogue still works. Action still works. Yeah. Nothing about it is is has has dated or aged, except maybe the character of Marion Ravenwood. Like I don't think you'd make that character now in 2016. Although it was set in the 40s, so I don't know how you'd have that sequence occur. Why? Which which part of well, her specifically? The fact that she is supposedly this tough woman who can drink anybody under the table, but then she turns into a damsel in distress, and they're constantly trying to okay. put her in dresses. All right. Which I'm just like, this is not necessary. Marion could hold her own with anybody. So why would she need to stand down to Indy the whole time? in the movie, it bothers me that she's constantly having to be rescued. See, I, I don't always, think that would work nowadays. I always took it for, once she starts doing that, especially when she's been captured and whatnot, yeah. is just another survival instinct. She's learned to survive on her own, and this situation called for me to play coy and oh, no, play... No, no. I don't have a problem with her manipulating her sex to get to get out of situations. I don't have a problem with that. The fact is that the movie puts her into these situations where she's constantly oh. being captured, she's constantly having to be saved, she's constantly having to be okay. these kinds... And it just bothers me. I, think, I don't think it would do it nowadays in 2016. I think the woman would be different, so it just bothered me a little bit. But it doesn't take away from the overall joy of the film, the acting, uh, yeah. Denholm Elliott, John Reese davis great stuff, and also uh, Harrison Ford, almost like stepping away from the Han Solo character uh, and like creating a whole new thing. Yeah, but still you know? now basically just becoming the embodiment of a different idealized man. Yes, you know what I mean. Absolutely. He did all these characters. Were like that guy was awesome. Yeah. I would love to be Han Solo. And then you see Indiana Jones, you're, you're like, like oh. oh man, this is even better because this one could happen. 
I always liked Indy a little bit better yeah. just because it's just like it's on it's here on Earth, so I could be Indiana Jones too. <laughs> I can't be Han Solo, but I could there's a chance. I could get a yeah. satchel. Yeah, and you a get a satchel. Leather fedora, a nice little hat, bull oh, whip, <laughs> go out. There was one kid on my street that had a bull whip. It was the coolest ever. Whoa. Like a full, legit looking one. He's probably in jail now. But no, uh, I, I, no but no. his younger brother is. Oh, there we go. The Boom. kid that was my age. We all saw that coming a mile away. <laughs> Even at eight, I was like, this kid is bad news. <laughs> I think he's been in jail now for like eight to ten years. He bequeathed him the whip. Good, and it was, good it luck was to over you, after that. Good luck to you. <laughs> no, but it just so so much of the film is still the dialogue, still perfectly snappy, perfectly oh yeah, uh, no, back and forth. Just so the opening great. sequence with yeah, the, 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 the huge boulder, the boulder, the boulder coming All down. That, it's, yeah, it's iconic cinema, and it's something that they will live on with me until the day I die. Absolutely. It's and they, they do, do a great job with this character because you're right, he's this great, like intelligent uh, mm -hmm. archaeologist, all this stuff. And what's his what's his weakness? Snakes. And it's just this little thing that you can still like as a as a as a you can remember being a kid being afraid of something like this, being yeah. afraid of snakes. For me it's sharks and apes. But snakes it well, was for him, so it's relatable. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that's it. Gives the character a fault. Yes, and we can all go. Ah, oh, yeah, I know somebody's like that about spiders. Right, they right. just freak out or right. something. You or know, cockroaches I know, or rats. My or mom whatever. is like that about snakes. Oh wow, she okay. will freak out. Okay. Uh, I think it's my grandma actually. Okay. It's a story. I think my mom, when she was a kid, she <laughs> draped a garter snake around her neck. What? And walked into the house, and my grandma freaked out and kicked her out. I believe that's the story. It's been a long time since I heard it, though. It's, it's an interesting family you have met. Next. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> anyway, what can you say? Right. What what's can your, you say? What's your number? Oh, plus the music. John Williams' score is fantastic. It's so great. Uh, it's just dun, 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 dun. You just mm -hmm. get lifted. It's so great. All right, what's your number two? My number two uh, is Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade. Wow. Love it. That's wow. my favorite Indian. Okay. Just because. I will let you take this. The third is never as good. Like it's the third is when they usually come back to the the formula, mm -hmm. and they do a close like ninety five percent version of the first one. Right. And when you add in such a central character with Sean Connery, yeah. And to me, their banter and their back and forth, and to see now, so great. It's it's not so much like the snakes. It's dealing with his father yeah. and having to get out from the thumb of like I'm a, I'm an adult. Right. Like just that he's, he still interacts with him as a child. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. Like when he's like, you know, we never had a talk yeah. all those years sat there and he's like, okay, let's have a talk right now. Let's do it. <laughs> he's like, uh, what do you want to ask me? I don't know. Yeah. And just like, well, uh, you know, but it just, the, you can see him still mentally interacting and they pull it off so beautifully. Mm -hmm. And they're only like, what, four or five, six years apart in age. Yeah. And just to see the two of them interact. I love the storyline. Let's go back to Nazis. Right. We can always hunt Nazis. Yeah, they're always yeah. the bad guys. Exactly. Oh. They're the easiest and best bad guys we've had yeah, for a long time. You, you don't got to flesh them out, give them exposition, no, no, give well, them levels. They're bad guys. The only people that side with them are like live in dark corners of the internet. Exactly. So that's fine. <laughs> The rest of us are unanimously agreed <laughs> right. they're evil. So yeah. let's just let's always attack Nazis. Yeah. Uh, and hey, you're right. I think what's great about the 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 Sean Connery, Harrison Ford stuff is it's relatable. It's universal. Like mm -hmm. some people grow up in the households like that with a dad like that that doesn't hug them, hug them, doesn't tell them they're amazing, doesn't do all this and doesn't love them. And you you use that fuel to create your own legacy, right? And then yeah. when and then you come back later and it sucks because the dad is softer. He's a bit, you know, he's been he's you can't you're like, wait, I was mad you for a long time and then you have to kind of find that resolution between each other so it's very universal because that scene at the end when he because he keeps saying his name right throughout the film in yeah. a derogatory when way when he switches when he switches when he's trying to take oh, his hand man. when he's trying to reach for the guy that's, that's so the better awesome. version of Mike in oh, Samuel Pride Ryan yes when he says you know Indiana instead yeah. of Junior yeah. I'm speaking to you as a friend mm -hmm. and someone who loves you and is concerned about you right now okay Yeah. and I know you prefer to be called that so that's fine yeah I need you to pay attention and as his dad yeah, yeah. but that's what he's saying under like Listen, I, I love you more than anything. Yeah. Anything. Please right. listen to me right now because I'm not trying to, you know, teach you self reliance and teach you all the things that yeah. you, you're now pushing against as you've traveled the world trying to you know, <laughs> steal artifacts to put them in museums. Uh, yeah. That's, that's what it's he's a doing. little shady. A little shady. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, it's a different time. Yeah, you're right. Sure. It's a different time. Okay. That needs to be saved instead of in private dealers' hands. God right. knows where it goes. Uh, but I also like, I also, uh, the things that denigrate the film for me and move it a little further down is uh, I don't like the female character. I think she's like almost like, what's the point of her and when you have someone like Marion Ravenwood, it's, it's, it doesn't bring the legacy back. And Kate Capshaw yeah. kind of took it down a little bit. And this goes even further down with that. I, I don't know if she's a bad actress. I just didn't like the character. I thought it was kind of services meh. pushing the film that little spot it does when he shows up to Venice and they right. need to get him through and then tie the two of them together. Totally. And once, once it's him and his dad, yeah. she disappears because yeah. she's just there to kind of set up a little. Now they have some commonality because they both did, obviously, right. you know, you know what. Well, I don't know why I'm cleaning that up. It's not my movie. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, exactly. so suddenly I'm getting vague. Because it's a high, huh? it's uh, a high, it's a high on your list. You got to defend it. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. Well, it's not even that. I defined it like deciding to make like I was the PR firm. Yeah, and oh, I'm not putting go. shielding up. It's like it's still a kid movie. That's right. So, that's right. Guys, go out there buy well, the DVD. I, I respect the fact it is. She's a good plot device. Yeah. My problem is there's no chemistry between her and Indy at all, and and that bothers me. And it takes it away from the film a little bit. And the Turkish guy and whatever they're doing, uh, that whole order. You're like, where is that coming? What's there's no it's just kind of like and presented if, and then dropped. If and there's so a Templar knight at the end, then yeah. there has to be somebody protecting the way to get to the end. Right, but it, 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 there's no that secret is too why big. Why and what is it about? And then they just disappear, and then just get blown up and pushed out of the way. And I think there should have been more involved there to take it all the way to the end. And it just bothered me that it was handled so quickly. Uh, it's a it's a force on horseback against tanks and jeeps. What are, what are they going to do in the long run? That's fair. It's guerrilla warfare in the desert. There's not a lot of places to hide. Yeah. So eventually you're going to get shot. <laughs> That's true. So, All right. What's your number two? Was that uh, your That was two? my two. Oh, so my two is Schindler's List. Okay. Right? I mean, what am I going to say? We won the Academy Award for Best Picture. Finally, for this film, so powerful, so moving. It's a film you have to watch at least once in your life. It's not easy to watch. I own it. I've watched it maybe twice. And I've owned it for a few years. See, and have you watched so, it in the, I, yeah, I in saw the past it last year? year? Yeah, I saw it last year. Because I remember when it's we did, powerful. you brought it up before, and you're like, God, I haven't seen that in so long. Yeah, because and then it I was so it, moving the first time. I saw it the next week after we, uh, okay. after we talked about it, because I was like, I need to see if this is any, I need to see if I can still handle this film. And the film is still devastating, man. It's de it's as, as, as harsh and realistic as the opening of Saving Private Ryan is, yeah. the entire film of Schindler's List is. It never lets you off the hook. Steven oh, no. Spielberg never has these moments of, like what she does in all his other films, these moments of like happiness or joy. There's these little amusing moments, but there's always the horrible truth of what's happening uh, at the whole time around it that is uh, always brought back to reality. The little girl in the red coat. Oh, it's yeah. it's all Ray Fiennes for me in that movie. Yeah, as much as Ray Fiennes is fantastic. You know, Kingsley and Neeson and yeah. everybody else is fantastic. Yeah. The the disassociative state that he's almost in yeah. with the vast majority of people around him that he is basically decided internally that they're not really people, so yeah. what I do to them is an atrocity and a horror. Yeah. And to see someone embody that disconnect from your fellow man, yeah. someone you could have easily grown up next to, and now you're just slaughtering these people right. and having no remorse for it whatsoever. Well, and that's, oh. and that, and that's my point. Like, you, you, have this idea, you have this window where you think a good ending is possible. Even though you know in your mind, like, he's a Nazi. There's no way there's a oh, possible... A moment of ending. redemption yeah, for him? Yeah, a moment of redemption for him. Yeah. And then he just... But he can't. So, but, right, but I'm saying... Spielberg does a great job of that because in other movies he would let that happen but in this movie he does and he, he can't historically but the way he does it is so powerful and it's so non-Spielberg like that I really think the film is elevated because of it he gives you no happy endings even the ending is not really a happy ending because the whole time he's saying I could have saved more per oh yeah when he's coupling, struggling now which, yeah, to find some that. sort of meaning in his existence exactly. because this is now going to be his legacy and he realizes it and I was like I can't believe I was blind to this yeah. reality for so long right. I was a fool yeah and he still feels so much guilt because he knows the countless individuals that just die yeah. for no other reason than they're just a different person, but they're exactly. still a, a person. A different race or different yeah. ethnicity or ethnicity different religion. or religion, whatever, yeah, you what know, whatever the case is. But also the black and white cinematography, all that. I, huh? mean, I mean, what's like to do that in the 90s, you know? Like, you got to come to the studio and be like, I'm going to do it black and white. Showa, which is one of the most amazing films, that's all mostly in color. The the one that was the one that Meryl Streep was in in the 70s, that was the TV version, like that was all in color. But with this, he had to bring it back all to the black well, and white. Makes, the starkness of it was Yeah, great. it makes sense because... <laughs> Through, you know, when history looks back on this event, yeah. we're going to look at it as a black and white issue. Yeah. So to see it then displayed in front of us That's as a black and white. Film, yeah, it's yeah. a black and white. This this is what happened. Yeah. Here's the stark reality. Yeah. There's no rosy colors here. The one one color you see is lost innocence. Yeah. Just running yes. right out of the frame. Exactly. Yeah. And the rest of it is just dark, drab, depressing. Yeah. Welcome to the gates of hell. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, this is this is fun. We do this to people. <laughs> this is great, guys. Right. Yeah, well, and this is why it's so high up on my list because I think it handles that it handles that topic with a with a fierceness and a rawness that yeah. a lot of films don't get to, and it's surprising that it came from one of our most feel good filmmakers and pop and you could say pop culture filmmakers in Steven Spielberg. So I, I, that's why I love it so yeah, much. Yeah, but laying the groundwork with his previous work, you could see that he was building something along Probably, these lines. Yeah, anyway, that's a good point, Matt. That's yeah, very good see, point. he started dipping his toes with Color Purple and yeah. other things into the more serious Empire of the Sun, right? Empire trying Sun. to tell a historical tale. Mm -hmm. Uh, sure. And then Tintin Tin came along. No, I'm joking. All right. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. What's our number one? 
Our number one Hello. is clearly it's Jaws. Jaws. It's Jaws. Absolutely. Let's just There's our it. number one. That's right. There's Look the beautiful that. graphic of number one. Do you think one. she's going to get away? I don't think she's going to get I away. I hope so. I sincerely hope so. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> I doubt it. It doesn't yeah. look good because that's that's like a prehistoric shark and that's like a human being. But even in that graphic, <laughs> like Jaws is even like three times larger than he is in the movie. Like yeah, that was a megalodon going that's, after that's megalodon. that tiny little. Look at that. Look at the size of him. It's that huge. thing is forty feet long. It's, let me tell you it's huge. That's a that two ton fish. Huge shark. Huge shark. Just, yes, look at that, like six foot teeth. Look at that thing. It looks like Pennywise. I, I hope we get to the movie at some point. <laughs> that is brutal. Seen it blown up in high def like that. that. I've know, never right? seen teeth in that high a detail. It's harrowing, harrowing. Is that the word? Oh, yet? dear God. Well, there's our number one. Anyway, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so. No, I mean, it's great. It's so. It has to be number one. Yeah, it has to be number one. It has to be number one. It's still so great. It's, it's set. It's set. <laughs> It set the blueprint for Spielberg coming up that he could do these huge movies, but also summer blockbusters. Yep. We have those because of this movie, Mm -hmm. and it's incredible. It holds up to this day. It really does. The sequels do not. No. But this one is one of those, like, this thing is stellar. The amount of terror by never showing the damn thing. Yeah. Your mind can conjure something infinitely worse than seeing that. Yeah, the happy accident of the fact that Shark didn't work on set, so he had to adjust on the fly about how to shoot the film without having the shark in it. He built the tension. And I think if you see Duel, you see this is the beginning of his idea of how to create this unknown terror that is chasing someone down. And uh, the shark becomes that. Where in Duel, it's the truck. Yep. In, in Jaws, it's the shark. And the shark cannot be stopped in any way, shape, or form. No. It's a lucky shot that gets him, uh, but he is just this killing machine that cannot be destroyed. And it's it's almost metaphorical for what uh, man versus nature, that idea that man can encroach on nature, man can do, oh, yeah. and then nature how nature will, will ultimately yeah, win. Absolutely. It's just inevitable. If yeah. we're stuck out there for too long, unless we got buddies, <laughs> very few of us make it. We That's wouldn't true. be here had we not banded together a long time ago as a species it's and be like, let's lock arms <laughs> because those things are big <laughs> and I don't have another chance. The only thing no we're doubt. good at evolutionarily is basically stamina and we can take pain. That's right. That's what we're superior at <laughs> is we can chase you down, you will tire out, and we can break like an arm and we'll still keep coming. We're That's like right. mini Terminators. That's right. That's what we're good at. That's a very good point. Uh, wh- also, what's great about, I think Roy Scheider's fantastic in the film. The relationship he has with, uh, I think it's Lynn, uh, I forget uh, the actress's yeah. name. No idea. Uh, but she's great in the film. But also, this, what, what you've got with, with Robert Shaw's Quint character and juxtaposed with, juxt- uh, with uh, Richard Dreyfuss' Hooper character, this is great. You have the primal man versus the educated man. Yeah. You have this whole thing banging well, together and both have flaws and both get exposed. But, and both believe that they have the right answer as Absolutely. to how to attack this problem. Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, technically, you should really meld both. Which is what Roy Scheider is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The bridge between the two. Yeah, smart guy, but he's still, he's a policeman. So he knows he's got, he can use brute force when he needs to. And that's the thing you find, find which is why I think uh, he's the one that has to, to, to do the kill shot at the end of the movie. I, I don't care about spoilers, but it's a movie about 40 years. I'm not gonna, I'm, I don't, don't get mad at me if I spoil the damn movie. You haven't seen it. That's on you. This thing is so good in the pacing and the and the score is so amazing. Well, and also exhilarating. Has, it has one of the best uh, sequences with Shaw doing the Indianapolis. Yeah. Oh. I heard that, and then I, I, I think I asked my dad about it. Yeah. And got like a, yeah, that happened. Mm-hmm. And then I read an account years later yeah. of the guys just basically just bobbing there for days on mm-hmm. end, and you'd hear screams in the night, and to hear that story, like, the look in his eyes, he looked like a great white, yeah. like they'd just gone black and rolled over as yeah. he goes back to the darkest memory that he's ever experienced. Yeah. And relaying that, it just, he didn't seem alive, like his soul had escaped him in the water all those years ago. Mm-hmm. And to see that even as a kid, I was... That was almost more moving than the shark. Ultimately, yeah. the shark wins. Yes. Because I can relate to that. Yeah. I've never been lampooned out in the middle of the Pacific. Uh, whereas I've been swimming Not in deep yet. enough pools and Not oceans yet. and yeah. going, you know, there could be a shark. <laughs> I've heard enough stories out here off the West Coast. Yeah, I know. I know. That's why I don't go. I don't go. This movie is the sole reason I do not go in water more than four feet. I don't. I just don't. It's, I, I will. To this soon, day? To this day. To this day. I, mean, I just I, remember because I, I said swimming pools before when I was a yeah. kid. There was this indoor pool we go to in the winter. And when you swam out, they, were, they had two diving boards, a high one and a low one. Oh, okay. And they had like a 15 foot or whatever the standard depth is that you can go down. Right. And in the back side of it, they had a black uh, shark painted into it. So I'd swim down as a kid and see that and be like, nope, I am turning <laughs> around. Even though I knew as an eight year old or whatever. It wasn't it was, real. Totally not real. Just the idea that it was 15 feet. I can't quite see the bottom. There could be a shark. Sure. I'm swimming right back out. And I was a good swimmer. I was on the swim team. But yeah, that pool always is like, nope. It's a big fat nope, even though it was painted. It's, oh. uh, it's, it's such 
such a great movie, and uh, I think it's a perfect one to be number one on our list. Yeah. So, that, so we, we should lock that down. That's number one, definitely. Oh, yeah. All right. We're going to count down each of our separate top ten lists uh, for the fans just to kind of remind everybody where we were at on our films, and uh, let's do that now. All right. I will go through my ten, and then, John, you go through your Sounds ten. Sounds good. So at ten, I have Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Yes. At nine, I've Look got Minority face. Report. Look at that. Where'd you oh. window? Look at that. Bing, bang, boom. Look <laughs> at that beard, baby. That is gorgeous. You are rocking it. Uh, I look like the worst wrestler of all time. No, like I just I, let myself go. You know what I mean? That's not true. Like I tore a rotator cuff and I've been out of the league for two years. <laughs> oh, man. I look terrible. All right. Black so Jack nine, Mulligan's little child. I've got Minority Report. <laughs> okay. Eight, Catch Me If You Can. Yes. Seven, Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yes. Six, Jurassic Park. Five, Schindler's List. Four, Lincoln. Three, Saving Private Ryan. Two, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Number one, Jaws. Johnny. Nice. All right. So my top ten, as it stands, is... Uh, at number 10, I have The Color Purple. Oh, Lord. There it is. <laughs> what a great graphic. Oh, yep. as much as I love my picture, yours you is know, even better. I love I love having four <laughs> chins. That doesn't, nothing, it doesn't bother me at all. All right, number 10, The Color Purple. Number 9, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Number 8, Jurassic Park. Number 7, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Number 6, Saving Private Ryan. Number 5, Minority Report. Number 4, Catch Me If You Can. Number 3, Raise the Lost Ark. Number 2, Schindler's List. And number 1, coinciding with Matt's number 1, Jaws. That picture is awesome. I hate that picture so and much. Here is I'm, my list. <laughs> I'm going to talk so much <laughs> about great. that picture. I think uh, we got to keep that at least no. for week two. Give me two weeks of that. Uh, no. That's all I'm asking for. I say we put a vote to the fans. I can see the keep memes. Keep John's picture. <laughs> Keep John's picture. I can't bang on the table. Keep John's picture. I can see the memes now. All right. Uh, all right. So anyway, let's let's hash out our top ten list of the shows. Uh, top ten. Yeah. Jaws number one, obviously. Jaws is number one. What did you have at number two again? That was easy peasy. Um, I've got Last Crusade at Oof, number that's two. That's way down on my list. So we. I know, but you've got Schindler's, Schindler's yeah. at uh, two, two, and I've got it at five. So it seems like Schindler should be two. Yeah, I'll all give right. you Schindler's at two. So then Last Crusade at three. Um, well, we're locking in Schindler's at two. Yes. So number three should be Last Crusade, because that's your number two. I'd appreciate it. Yeah, sure. Let's put it on there. <laughs> it's on I, my list. I think it's fantastic. Absolutely. It deserves a place of honor on our list. Wow. And I think three is a very nice spot for it to land. Okay. So I'm happy that it went there. Do You, you are amazing at uh, really embellishing what, that. Vamping? All right. yes, no problem. Right. The so, people ask for it. All right, you have, so I have Raiders of the Lost Ark next. What do you have next? Um, I've got Ark at seven. Okay. I've got uh, Saving Private Ryan at three. Okay, well, I have Saving Private Ryan. Let's see, three, four, five. I think this is my... Was that my number six? I think it was my number six. Will you give me so Ryan there? I guess I'll give Ryan, you yeah, Private Raiders. Saving. Saving Private Ryan should... I, that's fair. I think it's, you know, like I said, I love that film uh, to a degree, and you absolutely certainly love it very much. So why shouldn't it be at number four? And then, so five, we're now saying, is going to be Raiders of the Lost Ark. And that seems like a great place for Raiders. Ah, for you, it does. I have zero problem whatsoever. With of course you don't. I, I would fight you on this if I could. Look but at that I list, think, though. I, I mean, think, Raiders at five just beautifully balances out that top five. You look at it, and you're like, that's perfection, my friends. <laughs> that's right. Especially for Schindler's When you're looking for it, you're seeing it right there. There it is. All right, so my next one is Catch Me If You Can. What do you have? I got Catch It 8. Okay. Um, What's your next one? I've got Lincoln at four, which you don't have. I do not have on my All list. All right, so let's do catch. Let's do catch there. Okay, catch, catch me if you can. Which is a good show. I mean, I think this is a good one to start numbers. The, the second half of the top ten with Catch Me If You Can is a good film. We enjoy the work. You love the film as much as I do. Lincoln, not quite getting there. All right, for you perhaps, <laughs> but for me to see the man that did so much that got us through the Civil War. If you look at the, the pictures of him before and after the war, yeah. he aged thirty years in four years. Yeah, name me a president that doesn't leave his office looking like they nobody looks aged. like that. He went in looking Obama's, spry, and Obama's the next like one, gray hair. he should have had a Sith in his in his hand coming out. That's how old and depraved he wow. looked after four years. All right, fair or is enough. Or a scythe? I don't know. Scythe, yes. Were you taken aback by the pronunciation? <laughs> yes, that's I my was. guess. Uh, well, that's the list. All right, you know what? All right, fine. We'll we'll put Lincoln then after Catch Me If You Can. Why not? That's that you love it so much. It's high up on your list. We should put it there. It seems fair. <laughs> that seems that seems like you had to work through quite a few issues to allow yourself to let me have Lincoln well, right there. You know how much I love film. Uh, all right. Um, so that was seven. Yeah. Minority Report is my next one, and since I put your Lincoln on there, uh, I've got Minority at nine. Oh, there we go. And then I've got Jurassic after that. Where do you have okay. that? Okay. Well, let's focus on Minority Report first. I it deserves where it's got right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's our number eight. So yeah, we can put Jurassic Park next. That's fine with me. I mean, it's it's a Spielberg classic. Sure. It is a fundamental movie to generations of kids. Absolutely. Uh, the fact that they keep spinning off sequels Which God knows shows why. you that they, this thing is a, you know, 
a cash cow, and we're yes. going to ride it. Yes. That's what you do with cows. Well, if that's our number nine, what's your next? I feel like Close Encounter should be our 10, so that's both on both of our lists, even though I'd love to have Color Purple in there. What do you have next? Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll take Close Encounters, but since you gave me Lincoln, yeah. if you want to do Color Purple, I'll no, give it no, to you. No, no, no. It's fine. Close Encounters on both our lists. That seems fair. All right. Yeah. I, I, I give a shout out to Color Purple as it should. All right. Close Encounters at number 10. So let's let's run down the list of our top 10 here. Uh, we'll go one on one each. Back yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Uh, so at number ten, we've got Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Yes. At number nine, Jurassic Park. At number eight, Minority Report. At number seven, Lincoln. At number six, Catch Me If You Can. At number five, Raiders of the Lost Ark. At number four, Saving Private Ryan. At number three, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. At number two, Schindler's List. And our number one film is. Jaws. Jaws. There it is. Well, that's, a, that's, a, that's a pretty da, good list. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Can we get balloons and confetti no, no, eventually? No. We should once get we get up to a high enough viewership. <laughs> well, I, I'll pay a guy to come in and sweep it up. We need Nothing? We, <laughs> no, we're not oh, going to get that. I got shut down immediately. But, as soon as I put it up there, they just started shaking their head no. But John Williams is, has done the score for our show. So what you hear for this particular oh, is episode is a John Williams piece of score. So thank God. No, I'm joking. It's not true. It's not there. Now, uh, all right. So let's address the, the elephant in the room. Yeah. This the is, omission. Yeah. E.T. is not on either of our lists. And so there's a reason. Fire for away, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Fire <laughs> away. I don't think the film holds up anymore. I don't have the same magic for it. And there's a lot of films that I saw as a kid from back then that I do love and still enjoy. But for some reason, E.T. I went back and watched it uh, again with a couple of friends, and it just it doesn't have the same magic or, yeah. or joy Listen, for me. I was Elliot's age, roughly, when it came out. Yeah, right and I watched it, and you I thought love it was, more than me. Yeah, I thought it was the most amazing movie mm -hmm. that I'd ever seen. Mm -hmm. I know I did, hands down. Yeah, I was looking forward to the Atari game. Never got to play it. Oh, uh, I nice genuinely reference. was. I was like, they made a game. I'll play that. Uh, but now watching it as an adult, it just yeah. it has it just doesn't have the magic for yeah. me anymore. Yeah. Just watching it, I just feel like just get to the next part. Yeah. Or please get to this part. Or I just I don't have the the emotional tie with yeah. it that I once did. I wish, yeah. but yeah. it's just gone. That part yeah. of my soul unfortunately has died. <laughs> I don't know where it well, went. Apparently it's died for it both of us. It took it away. Apparently it's died for both of us. Yeah. I don't that. know what, what don't communal know event we had happen that killed lovable aliens coming into our lives and making us fly on our bikes. But uh. It is gone. I think a clown was involved. I have a feeling. Wow. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> so, uh, listen, we want to say one thing real quick. I think both of us, if we can get it on a two shot, just want to say yeah. uh, we want to dedicate the show to Dylan Esposito, uh, one of the Schmoville uh, members who was, who ran our Facebook page. Yeah, and he, he reached out to us. He set it all up. He said, you guys are great. Can I please help you? Can I do... Yeah. Can I set this up for you? Because yeah. you may have never done it, and I know how to do it. And just yeah. started the ball rolling and got people to join the page. And yeah. from there on, you know, we've interacted with them yeah. quite a, a bit times, over yeah. the past fourteen months. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, he yeah. uh, passed away in the tragic car accident over the weekend. So we just want to send our thoughts out to his family and to his girlfriend, and say, hey, man, we're thinking about you. Yeah, and thank you so much. Thank you so much. For You're me. missed. Yeah, very much so. Uh, all right, so let's talk about. Um, one real quick thing, Matt. You've got a Schmodown match coming up. Coming up in two weeks. Yes, you are. It is going July against, the fifteenth. July fifteenth. You're going against Elliot Dewberry. Dewberry and I are going head to head, <laughs> tete a tete, mano a mano. Mano a mano. <laughs> it's the, the you know, the battle in the half circle Yo, right here. I like that. On that, like, that's the best I come up with on yeah. the cartoon magnet. Yes. I don't know if that has as good a ring to it. Yeah. I like the half circle. It's almost like the squared circle. I, I do. That's what I'm going to go well, with. Well, for that wrestler pick that you had, I think that fits well. <laughs> yeah. This? <laughs> this is perfect. Yeah. It's like the, the reject brawny man that I had going there. <laughs> and I want to I wanna ask you one thing. I'm uh, Before we end the show, I'm facing Scott Mance. Uh, you know that. You yep. know the sequel's coming. We talked about the bash of the beach. Battle at the, the beach. The beach. Uh, I would like you, if you have, if you're available that day, I want you to come and lead me out. And I, I have zero problem. The problem, okay. like the other times it's come up, I yeah. found out like a day or two before. Yes, and it's just like so I'm letting I, you know I now. Have, yeah, that's why I'm letting you know now. I'm Not a problem. Wear the American flag speedos. You are as going we full talked about it committed? on the podcast. Yeah, yes, I'm shaking your hand for yes. that, my friend. Thank you, sir. Shaking your hand. Thank you. I went and looked on Amazon to see what the options were. Yeah, and you are going to look stunning. I'm not going to look. It's the look only terrible. only word that I can think of. The adjective to best fit what is going to happen. Because you only have a couple options. That's true. 
That's true. I started doing squats in preparation. Oh, <laughs> so there's a visual. <laughs> As I'm just saying, we just got off American flag speedos. Hello. All right. Anyway, listen, thank you so much for watching our first episode yeah. of the Top 10 Show. Uh, please follow Matt at Matt Nost on Twitter. Follow me at The Roca Says, R O C H A. You can see me on shows here on Collider. Uh, you can see Matt. Uh, Matt, are you still doing anything in the stand up world? Well, I, all I want to say was uh, thanks yeah. to Collider and the Schmoes yeah. for you know, bringing us in. Absolutely. Giving us- Taking our show uh, up to their uh, the studios and whatnot, yeah. giving us a shot up here. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. I enjoyed this first show. Please yeah. tune in next week. Yeah. And uh, thanks for watching. Yeah. And uh, keep the comments civil. I mean, come after us. But keep oh, the yeah. Fire away civil. if you want to. I don't care. Just know that nothing is going to pierce this armor. <laughs> and and you could- whatever died with ET also gave me a hard shell exterior. <laughs> So you can fire at will. You're never going to hit land a bullet that actually... I don't have an Achilles heel exposed. There is. So good luck. There it is. Well, unless you call the Chicago Bulls. All right. Uh, at, follow the follow the show at Top 10 Show on Twitter as well. And we have an Instagram at Top... Well, no, actually not anymore, right? We'll figure that out as it comes along. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, so much for watching. And we will see you all next week. Toodles. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.